Welcome to my latest case, The Secret of the Old Clock. To start, choose Junior or Senior Detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on Tutorials. The year, 1930. The place, the road to Titusville, where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her? Does it have something to do with the fact that Emily's mother died barely a month earlier, leaving Emily to run the restaurant with only her guardian to help her? And more important, why, when she called, did Emily sound so desperate? The spunky teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware that Emily isn't all that awaits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. Drop a nickel into the slot, please. Well, hello. I'll bet my bloomers you're Nancy Drew. That's right. Are you Emily's guardian? You got it. I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian, but only for the next three months until she turns 18. Then she's on her own. Mmm, it smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies are the lilac in specialty. We get orders from all over. Oh, that reminds me your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. Emily didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. She didn't? Don't get me wrong, she can invite anybody here she wants. It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. Maybe she's just, you know, still thinking about her mom. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Gloria and me, we were best friends, you know? The two of us ran this swell little dress shop over in Capital City. But then she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. Emily's father... Died in the war. Cantigny, I think. Anyway, I couldn't say no. I mean, what are best friends for? I just wish I knew how to help Emily. You make it sound like she's in some kind of trouble. She's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb Dora like me. Go on up, she's in her room. Just make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. Nancy, hi. Welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, thank you for that nice note you sent me when Mom died. It meant a lot to me. Well, I lost my mom, too, years ago. I kind of know how you feel. 
You and I may not be best friends or anything, but you're still one of the nicest people I know. Well, thank you. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor, a big favor. You and your dad? What kind of favor? Shh! What's wrong? I thought I heard something. Your father has a safe, right? This is 1930. Lots of people have safes. See this jewelry? I'd like you to take it home with you and put it in your father's safe. It's beautiful. It was my mother's. The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was hiding it here in my room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. What do you mean, all things considered? Strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can say. I know it sounds loony, and Jane probably told you that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. What was that? Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! Come on, we better get out of here! This is horrible, just horrible. The fire chief says the stove was completely destroyed and there's smoke damage everywhere. The inn will have to shut down for months, maybe even for good. Does he know what caused the explosion? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark and boom. He said insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky. And that's when times are good. Who was in the kitchen this morning? Emily was the last person to use the stove. Like I said, she's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset, but it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire, so now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Excuse me. Oh, no! Emily? My mother's jewelry! It's gone! Someone must have stolen it while we were all downstairs. I knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it. You mean this sort of thing has happened before? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, I'd rather not say. But I will say this. I did not leave the stove on. That fire was not my fault. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. And if I lose the inn... I wish Mom were still here. I wish Josiah Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Who's Josiah Crowley? He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. 
He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us in his will. He gave us a clock, and afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, Time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. Maybe he didn't leave you anything because he didn't have anything. Oh, he didn't act like it, but he was rich. His estate was worth almost a quarter of a million dollars. Everything went to Richard Topham. He's this man who claims to be able to help people develop their paranormal powers. How did Josiah Crowley know him? Josiah was kind of a screwball. <laughs> One time he showed up at my birthday party dressed as my great aunt Harriet. I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him, and he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. But to get our hopes up like that and then leave us nothing, it just wasn't like him. How many people knew you kept your mother's jewelry in here? No one. Well, Jane, my guardian, she knew, but I didn't tell anyone else. Was your mother's jewelry insured? Gosh, I forgot about that. I don't know. Jim Archer, I bet he'd know. He's our banker. I guess I should go talk to him. Not one of your favorite people, huh? Oh, no. Mr. Archer's very nice. I mean, for a stuffy old banker. I'm just so bad at business things. And Jane, my guardian, she tries hard, but she's no good at it either. Maybe you could go talk to him. Please? It would be such a big help. Sure. He runs the Main Street Bank. You can't miss it. I'll call him and tell him you're coming. Where is Richard Topham now? He still lives in Josiah's house, which is right down the path out back. His house and the inn were built at the same time by two brothers during the Civil War. I'll be back in a little bit. Don't forget to call your father.
what this mirror is doing in here. Drop a nickel into the slot, please. There we go. Now, how may I be of service? I'd like to talk to Carson Drew. His number is KL57187. Hang on a minute. Carson Drew speaking. Hi, Dad. Well, I see you got to Titusville okay. The car ran like a top. It ought to. That's a fine car. You treat it well, it'll treat you well. I was told that you wanted me to call? I need to get some documents from a colleague over there. I thought since you were in the area, you could pick them up, save him paying postage. Sure. What's the address? He said he'd just leave them for you at the telegraph office. Just drive into town and look for Tubby Telegrams. He said you can't miss it. Will do. These papers are extremely important, Nancy. I will pick them up, Dad. Good. Remember, watch your gas gauge and get gas when you're low so you don't run out. And try to avoid potholes. The more you hit, the likely it is you'll wind up with a flat. Yes, Dad. And if you do get a flat, take it off and put on your spare. And then head straight to a gas station and get it fixed. Yes, Dad. All right, lecture over. Have you found out why Miss Crandall asked you to visit? She wanted me to have you lock her mother's jewelry up in your safe. Only someone stole it before I could take it with me. Stole it? Good gosh. That was right after the stove in the kitchen exploded. The stove exploded? Sounds to me like you'd be well advised to cut your visit there short. No, I want to find out what's going on. I have to find out what's going on. You have to? Well, yeah, you know. Emily just lost her mom, and she's worried about losing the inn, and her guardian's all wet when it comes to helping out, and... And the truth is, you are so curious that you feel like you'll absolutely burst if you don't find out why all these weird things have been happening, right? Yes. Don't worry, I know the feeling. You're a chip off the old block, I'm afraid. Well, as long as you're like me in one other way, you should be fine. What way is that, smart? Careful. I met Emily's guardian, Jane. What does a guardian do, anyway? A guardian is pretty much a surrogate parent. Jane is legally responsible for Emily's physical and financial well-being. Jane doesn't strike me as being the parental type. In fact, I get the impression she's in way over her head. Fortunately for her, it's not forever. Most guardianships end when the ward turns 18. And then both Jane and Emily will be free to do whatever they please. If Emily sells the inn, will Jane get part of the profits? If she's Emily's guardian at the time of the sale, yes. Are you suggesting that Jane's primary motivation is greed? Good grief. Where did you get such a suspicious mind? I think it was from the person who has always told me that the best way to solve a problem is to look at all the possibilities, Dad. I did say that, didn't I? If somebody says they're going to leave you something in their will, and then doesn't, is there anything you can do about it? Not a thing. Whatever's in writing is the only thing that counts. Unless, of course, the will was tampered with, or forged, and you can prove it. If not, you're out of luck. Why do you ask? Emily's neighbor, Josiah Crowley, told her and her mom that they were going to inherit part of his estate. But when he died, his will left everything to this ESP expert named Richard Topham. That's too bad, but this Crowley fellow was free to leave whatever he wanted to whomever he wanted, I'm afraid. People do change their minds, you know. Goodbye, Dad. Bye-bye.
car I saw before is gone. Something I can do for you? Well, my name's Nancy Drew, and my father Say said Say no that... more. You're here to pick up some papers. They're in that envelope. Thank you. You're welcome. Say, is that your roadster out there? Yes, it is. Did I park somewhere I shouldn't have? No, no. It's just that my regular driver never showed up today, so I've got no way to deliver all these telegrams. How would you like to earn some extra cash? You mean you want me to deliver them for you? You've got a car, you're trustworthy, or at least your father thinks you are, so what do you say? I'll pay you 25 cents each time you complete a delivery. And you might even get some tips. Okay, sure. Great, you're hired. Here, deliver this to Seymour out at Blenheim Nursery. Come back when you're done and I'll pay you and give you another telegram to deliver. Great, see you in a little while. I've got a telegram for Seymour. Just leave it on the desk there. I'd uh, tip you, but as you can see, my hands are filthy. What are you doing? I'm trying to doll up some of my plants before this guy named Mr. Martin comes in. He's a big cheese at some oil company, and I'm hoping he... Ow! Did that plant just bite you? It did kind of feel that way. I think I'll be going now. Bye! Looks like someone recently had a key appraised. I'm supposed to put my scorecard in here when I'm done.
Interesting. Can't hit the links without a scorecard. I hit it too hard. I hit it too hard. I hit it too hard. I hit it too hard.
hit it too hard. Missed it. Find the toy mouse and give it to Yuri, would you please? Otherwise, he'll just keep meowing. He hates strangers. How nice of you to drop by, and thank you for walking instead of parking in the driveway. I'm expecting a pupil I'd hate for her to have to park on the road. How did you know who I was? If one is to teach others how to develop and use their paranormal gifts, it's only logical that one must possess such gifts oneself. Does that mean you can read minds or tell the future, or what exactly? The paranormal includes telepathy or communicating by sending and receiving thoughts, extrasensory perception or perceiving that which cannot physically be seen or heard, and psychokinesis, using one's psychic energy to reshape or move objects. Cheapers, you can do all that? Yes. Well, on occasion. As I tell my students, increasing one's rate of success is simply a matter of practice. Do you have a lot of students? Oh, indeed. I take them through exercises designed to help them increase their output of phantasmic energy. If you want to sign up for an introductory session, I believe I have an opening today. What I'd really like to do is talk about Josiah Crowley. Oh. I'm afraid I'm busy, young lady. Far too busy to engage in idle conversation. You're not trying to hide something, are you, Mr. Topham? I'll be blunt, Miss Drew. I've discovered that the more time I spend with the, uh, shall we say, intellectually unendowed, the more my cerebral pulsations seem to diminish. I'm afraid I cannot speak to you further unless and until you prove that you are worthy. That is, that your brainwaves are not unacceptably inferior and thus deleterious to mine. My brainwaves are just fine, Mr. Topham. What I have here is an exercise in logic. If you can discern the correct solution, then I'll know that conversing with you will do me no psychic harm. You may take it with you. Good luck and good day. Would it be okay if I looked around? Go right ahead. The place is more like a museum than a house. Was this Josiah's clock? Everything in here was Josiah's.
What are you when you win, Bard Bounce? What poet is the cat's meow? What will Para, my miniature golf course, get you? What's Gloria's middle name? B. Coder is in the r rivet. Two to the right. to Gloria. Looks like Josiah lent a trivet to someone, but I can't make out to whom. That room is off limits, I'm afraid. What do you do with these? I put them on the windshields of cars parked in the area. Great advertising. Ever put them on cars at the Lilac Inn? All the time. I've gotten quite a few pupils that way.
That looks right. I'm getting there. That looks right. Am I smart or what? Am I smart or what? Hello, Miss Drew. Hello, Mr. Topham. Am I to assume that you have the correct solution to that logic problem? Right here. Let's have a look. <laughs> Why, you appear to have indeed found the solution. Well, since you've proved yourself to be intellectually above average, which means talking to you should do me no harm, what would you like to talk about? When and how did you meet Josiah Crowley? Last summer, while on my way to the university for a conference, I stopped for a bite at the Lilac Inn. Since it was crowded and I was in a hurry, I agreed to share a table with an elderly gentleman who, like me, was by himself. As soon as I told Mr. Crowley who I was and what I did, well, he insisted that I give him a training session that very afternoon and was so thrilled with his progress that he demanded I stay and teach him everything I knew. So it was his idea that you set up your school in his house? Oh, I know. Rumor has it that I somehow tricked him into it, that I insinuated my way into his home. But I assure you that was not the case. Were you surprised when you found out that Josiah had left you everything? Delighted? Yes. Surprised? Not really. Josiah was all alone, you see surrounded by people like the Crandalls and that banker, Jim Archer, people who were nice to him only because they knew he had money. What's in the carriage house that's out back? Do you know? That was Josiah's workshop. I assume it contains even more detritus. Have you ever played Bard Bounce? The game that's in the parlor of the Lilac Inn? Never. Such frivolities are an inexcusable waste of cerebral energy. Have you ever made par on the golf course that's out back? Young lady, I've never set foot on that golf course, let alone made whatever par is. Would you happen to know what Gloria Crandall's middle name was? I haven't the foggiest. Do you mind if I look around some more? Be my guest.
The man on stage in this picture, is that Josiah? Yes, that's from a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream that he directed and starred in. It closed after two nights, but he didn't care. He loved that play. As you soon realized, Josiah's mental faculties were starting to go, I'm afraid. He tended to ramble. Very little of what he wrote in there makes sense. If I'm going to play golf, I'm going to need a golf ball and putter. Hit it too hard.
he hit it too hard. Darn.
So, is Emily all right? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. What? Did you happen to see anyone go upstairs during all the commotion that the fire caused? No. You mean someone stole it while everybody was rushing around trying to put out the fire? Hypers! If you can't trust a fireman, who can you trust? Are you sure no one besides you and Emily was in the kitchen this morning? Positive. Well, I suppose someone could have snuck in the back door. Are you saying someone caused that fire on purpose? To distract us? It's possible, don't you think? But I'm the only one who knew she had that jewelry. Well, it's not quite true. When Gloria was alive, she could have told people about it, or people may have seen her wearing it. And when she died, they knew the jewelry had to be around here somewhere, right? Does anyone in particular come to mind? Sorry. It's been hard enough getting to know Emily, let alone anyone else in this backwater burg. Well, guess better go call the sheriff. Have you met Richard Topham? Yeah, I've had the displeasure of meeting that quack. Somehow he knew who I was before he even saw me. He came over while they were putting out the fire today. Asked me who you were, and I was so frazzled at the time, I told him. I don't usually give that crackpot the time of day. Does everybody around here feel that way about him? Not everybody. Like that circus fella said, there's a sucker born every minute. Me? I think ESP is a lot of J-U-N-K. Where did that barred bounce game that's in the parlor come from? Do you know? Emily says Josiah Crowley brought it in one day and just left it. Said it was so guests, as in him, would have something to do while they waited for a table. Does the miniature golf course that's out back belong to the inn? No, that was Josiah Crowley's. Way I hear, he built it himself. Was it open to the public? Nope, it was just his own private little course. Can you imagine? Wish I had money to throw around like that. What was Emily's mom's middle name? Do you remember? Of course I do. It was... Oh, Piffle. It's right on the tip of my tongue. It was... It was... Ugh. It'll pop into this feeble brain of mine one of these days. Why don't you just go ask Emily? Well, I'll talk to you later. All righty dighty Hi, Nancy. What was your mother's middle name? Lois. Why? Oh, just curious. Do you play much miniature golf on the course that's out back? Not anymore. When I was little, I used to play with Josiah. Sometimes he'd help me get par just so I could get something from the prize machine. Do you remember what you got? A little toy dog or something. Very cheaply made and quite forgettable, obviously. Is the clock in the parlor the one Josiah gave you? Yes. I don't know why he gave it to us. It's never worked, and nobody can open it to find out why. Do you know anything about a cue Josiah left your mother in a note? No. Why? Oh, just curious. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay.
Hello, Miss Drew. Hi, Mr. Topham. Is it okay if I look around? Certainly. I hit it too hard. I hit it too hard. I hit it too hard. Hooray!
I wonder what goes here. Hello, are you Mr. Waddell? So what if I am? I found this receipt, and I just wondered what you could tell me about it. Let me see that. One key, determine resale value, item 493. Oh yeah, this was for that key Jim Archer wanted me to appraise. Jim Archer wanted you to appraise a key? It was very ornate, had jewels all over it. Fake jewels, as it turned out. When I told him it was worthless, the cheapskate refused to pay me and told me to keep it. Do you think I could have it? Sure, once you pay the appraisal fee. Which is? A dollar and fifty cents. Here you go. Good. Here's the key. Enjoy. Hello. I'm looking for Jim Archer. Right through that door. Hello, are you Nancy Drew? Yes, are you Mr. Archer? Yes, ma'am, Jim Archer. I'm founder, president, manager, and just about everything else you can name when it comes to this fine enterprise. I hear that some businesses aren't doing so well these days. Ever since the stock market crashed, one business after another has closed, including banks. President Hoover keeps saying that a recovery is just around the corner, but you have to wonder. Is your bank doing okay? I'm happy to report that we're doing just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Main Street Bank, Jim Archer speaking. No, I don't. I'm sorry, but... Yes, I know, but... All right, then just bring it by. Sorry for the interruption. How can I help you? Do you happen to know whether the jewelry Emily inherited from her mother was insured? Well, I know for a fact that it was not. Why? Because someone snuck into the inn today and stole it. Oh, no. I heard there had been a fire in the kitchen, but when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? I told Gloria not to let that policy lapse. Why did she let it lapse? She felt that since Josiah Crowley would be leaving her a large sum of money when he died, or so she thought. Paying to insure her jewelry just wasn't necessary. How well did you know Josiah Crowley? 
Well enough for him to name me executor of his will. An executor is the person who makes sure the terms of a will are carried out. Why do you think he wound up leaving Gloria nothing? I have no idea. Truth be told, he'd given me the impression that I would be well taken care of when he passed on too. But when I finally read his will, it all went to top him. What's your opinion of Richard Topham? Interesting gentleman who's in an interesting line of work. Do you think he really does what he says he can do? He makes a living doing whatever it is he does. So obviously someone thinks he's the real deal. Where did Josiah keep his will? He'd hidden it in a chest of drawers in his house. It took me months to find it. When he named me executor, he said he'd tell me where it was hidden when the time was right. Whatever that meant. How did Josiah die? He was sitting in the public library reading when apparently his heart just decided it was time to stop. What was he reading? His favorite book, The Makeup Secrets of Lon Chaney. The will you found in Josiah's house. Is it possible that Josiah didn't really write it? Well, the thought that it could be a forgery did cross my mind. But an expert verified that the will had been typed on Josiah's typewriter and signed in Josiah's hand. But Richard Topham lived in Josiah's house. He had access to his typewriter, and he could have copied his signature. As far as the law is concerned, the matter is closed, Miss Drew. But it's possible that Josiah's real will is still out there. Are you sure he never gave you any clue as to where he'd hidden his will? Whenever I asked him, he said he'd tell me when the time is right. Although, he got a safe deposit box here about three years ago. Has it been opened? Topham has tried to claim its contents, but he can't find the key. If Topham can't find the key, maybe it's because it wasn't in Josiah's house. Now, Miss Drew, I wouldn't go jumping to any conclusions. How well do you know Jane Willoughby? You know, Emily's guardian? Not well at all. Met her once or twice. Seemed a little flighty. What was Emily's mom like? Had a good head on her shoulders. Friendly, too. Having a big slice of blueberry pie at the lilacan was always a real treat. It'd be nice if family could carry on the tradition, but times are just too tough. If she's smart, she'll sell before the bills start piling up. I guess I'll be going. Come back any time. Hello again. I guess I'll be going. Goodbye now. Is this your car? Yes, it is. Bought and paid for. Did Josiah Crowley give you this clock? Yes. Unfortunately, it stopped keeping time almost immediately. It would sure be nice to be able to open this thing. Pickford is this lonely old woman who comes in here every once in a while. Took a shine to me for some reason. Insisted on giving me that picture. Don't you ever use this typewriter? That used to be Josiah Crowley's. It was the only thing he left me in his will. Naturally, it doesn't work. The keys always jam. October 9, 1929. Dear Mrs. Sheldon, here is the trivet I said you could borrow for your party at Twin Elms. Please take care of it because I will want it back someday. Your friend, Josiah C. I wonder if Josiah ever got his trivet back.
Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Take this to Counselor Alice out at Camp Avondale. Keep up the good work. Hi, I've got a telegram for a counselor here named Alice. That's me. Hang on. Oh, go dry up, Jason. <laughs> what a jokester. Anyway, thanks. I'm afraid I don't have any money to tip you. That's okay. Have a swell day. Welcome to Zippy's, where zipless service is zippily zapped and zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 25 cents worth, please. That'll be 25 cents. Here you go. Thank you, miss. Anything else? No, thank you. Drive zippily. So this is the Titusville Courthouse. Hello. Shh. Do you wish to check out a book? No, thank you. Bye. You need some nails? No, thank you. Bye. Bye. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Mr. Jones at Vash's Dairy. Keep up the good work.
I need to deliver this telegram to Mr. Jones. That's me, thanks. You can tell me I'm all wet, but I don't have any money to tip you with. Wait a minute, here, how about a nice fresh glass of milk? Uh, no thank you, bye. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Miss Ross at Sunnybrook Farm. Keep up the good work. I have a telegram from Miss Ross. My name's Rebecca, and I'm only ten, but I'll deliver it to her for you, I promise. I won't let you down or double-cross you or anything like that. Well, okay. Thank you, Rebecca. No sweat. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Dr. Bob out at the observatory. Keep up the good work. I'd like to talk to Carson Drew. His number is KL57187. Hang on a minute. Carson Drew. Hi, Dad. Did you pick those papers up yet? Yep. Great. You can give them to me tonight when you get home from Emily's. So what else have you been doing? This Richard Topham guy honestly believes he has psychic powers. He's not just some sort of con man? No, I think he's so good at convincing himself that he can read minds and move spoons that he has no problem convincing other people that he can. Or perhaps it's a function of the clever Hans effect. 
Oh, I just read something about that. Then, as you know, sometimes an interrogator will give involuntary visual and or verbal cues in order to help another person arrive at the desired answer. Keep your eyes and ears open when you're around this Topham fellow. He may unconsciously tell you more than either of you realizes. Good for you. That's a great way to meet people and to accumulate a little cash, which might come in handy. You're putting extra wear and tear on your car, you know. Yes, Dad. What else have you been up to? Goodbye, Dad. Take care. Drop a nickel into the slot, please. There we go. Now, how may I be of service? Hi, could you please connect me with Bess Marvin at KL54468? Just a second. Hello? Hi, Bess. It's Nancy. George, get over here. It's Nancy Drew. So how's the lilac in? Beautiful. Are the lilacs blooming? Like crazy. They smell so good. It's like the air is made of perfume. Hi, Nancy. Is that you, George? Ouch, that's my foot. Well, move over. But I can't hear. You move over. Then I can't hear. Look, just hold the phone like this, okay? There. Can you hear us? I can hear you fine. It would be so nice to have two phones in this house. We don't even have a telephone at our house. It's a quick griping. So, Nancy, what's the scoop? Well, I talked to Emily Crandall. Well, I talked to Emily Crandall. Bess was telling me that you don't really know her that well. Bess and I just know her through Helen Corning. The last time I saw her was at Helen's 15th birthday party. I saw her last year at Helen's recital. Hello? Is someone on the line? Hello? We're on the line, Mrs. Farthingham. Well, get off. I need to make a call. But we just got on. Then it should be no problem for you to get off. Just give us one more minute, Mrs. Farthingham, please. Oh, all right. You have one more minute. Go on, Nancy. What were you saying? Just that I... Shh. Wait a minute, Mrs. Farthingham. Would you mind hanging up? All clear. Oh, how I wish we didn't have to share a phone line with her. Just be grateful you have a phone, Bess. Some jewels were stolen out of Emily's room this morning at the same time that a fire destroyed the stove in the kitchen. Destroyed the stove? You mean they can't bake any more cherry pies? Not for a while. Emily's worried that she may have to sell the inn. Is that bad? I mean, she's only 17. The bad part is, I get the feeling Emily is keeping something from me. Like what? I don't know. Yet. Yet? Well, I can't just turn around and drive home now, can I? Why not? Because, well, because... Are you girls still on the line? We're not done talking yet. Well, I've been patient long enough. You girls get off right now. But we... Right now, or the next call I make will be to your father. We gotta go, Nancy. That's all right. I'll call you later. And I'll thank you not to listen in. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Farthingham. Only nosy busybodies listen in on other people's phone calls. Yes, well, hang up and be quick about it. Bye, Bye Nancy. Nancy. Talk to you soon. Oh, Nancy, I'm afraid there's been more trouble. Trouble? It's Emily. She... Oh, this is silly. I'm her guardian. I should just make her sell this place. She's only 17, for Pete's sakes. She should be out meeting boys and going to parties, not trying to run a business. Miss Willoughby, what happened? Just go ask her and make her tell you everything. Jane told you, didn't she? What happened? That picture on the wall over there? I saw it move. I was just sitting here and it moved all by itself. I saw it move. I really did. Last week, a book fell off the shelf for no reason. And before that, I heard these weird noises. And almost every day I hear a voice, like a whisper, coming out of nowhere. Jane thinks it's nerves, but I... I don't want to talk about this. Did you see Jim Archer? I'm afraid I don't have very good news. The jewelry wasn't insured? Your mom dropped the insurance in order to save money for... Shh! Did you hear that? Hear what? Shh! Nothing. I'm going to have to sell the inn, aren't I? You know, it's possible, just possible, that the will that was found was not the will Josiah wrote. You mean, he may have left us money after all? No. That's wishful thinking. 
And I refuse to get my hopes up again because they'll probably just get dashed again. Listen, I feel bad enough that you drove all the way out here for nothing. Maybe you should just go home. Would you mind if I stayed for a while? No, but I really don't feel like being sociable right now. There's nothing for you to do. I'd like to try to figure out what happened to that jewelry. <laughs> what are you? Some kind of Sam Spade? Well, just because I've never solved a mystery before doesn't mean I can't. Anyway, there's no harm in trying, right? Who knows? I might turn out to be good at it. Be my guest. Did Josiah ever say anything about hiding his will somewhere? No, but he was always hiding stuff. I know because he was always writing reminders to himself about how to find it. But whenever the subject of his will came up, he'd just say he was happy knowing we were going to be happy when he passed on. Time will tell. That's all he'd say. Do you have any idea where Josiah may have hidden a safe deposit box key? He could have hidden it anywhere. He always said his favorite hiding place was right under people's noses. I'll be back in a little bit. You're the best. Guess I can't turn the crank unless I'm playing a record. Is this your sewing machine? Actually, that belonged to my mom. She and Jane used to be dressmakers. Mom was going to teach me how to use it, but she... she never got the chance. Have made this picture move. From the looks of those lanterns, I'm not the only one who's been down here recently. An old piggy bank! Swell! A dollar! This piggy bank looks like it's been here for a long time.
Guess I better not leave the lights on. Jeepers, that sounds like Richard Topham. This door must open right into his living room. I can't go in there now. Mr. Topham will see me. I better not leave the lights on. Okay, have I played a record? Sure. I'll never forget the night it all began. That dark, stormy, fateful night when I decided the time had come to rid the world of the creature. But it would take money to do that, and to get money, I needed to confront my arch enemy, Nick, who had recently become able to transform himself fittingly into a giant warthog. When his forest hideaway came into view, I dismounted and approached the door on foot so I could take him by surprise. I fear that he would hear me prove groundless, for a terrible storm began to rage, washing away the sound of my footsteps. I peered through the rain-streaked window beside his front door and could see him sitting in front of the fire. He had returned to human form, but the malicious smile on his face suggested that he was recalling his recent poor sign exploits. Seeing that the door was unlocked, I hurled it open and marched across the room toward him. Step away from that bottle of warthog potion, I commanded, and give me the 20 gold coins you stole from my poor servant. I'm not going to give you a thing, save perhaps a taste of my sword. And with that, he drew his sword in an instant I had drawn mine, and so commenced the fiercest sword fight the world had ever known! The storm raging outside paled in comparison to our battle. To my surprise, Nick's experiences as a lower life form seemed to have improved his skill as a swordsman. I fainted, I parried, and yet victory eluded me. And soon, I began to feel my strength ebbing from me. I was tiring rapidly, summoning every ounce of what little energy remained in my body. I lunged at him one last desperate time. Ouch! Why, you've wounded me. I had managed to wound him on his right arm, just above the elbow. Curse you! His words, punctuated as they were by an untimely clap of thunder, sent a shiver down my spine. Save your breath, I intoned, and give me those gold coins. Here, take your precious coins. He tossed the bag of coins onto a chair, but as I reached for them, he reached for his bottle of potion, and in a matter of seconds, my night had gone from bad Horrible.
Hello, Miss Drew. Hi, Mr. Topham. Now what? What do you think happened to the key to Josiah's safe deposit box? Josiah no doubt lost it. He had a terrible memory, poor fellow. Are you still looking for the key? What's the point? No doubt it's filled with the same thing as this house. Junk. But if it's junk, why haven't I gotten rid of it, you may well ask. Well, I know it's silly to hang on to Josiah's things, but he was a wonderful man, you see. And I just don't have the heart to get rid of them. Too sentimental for my own good, I guess. It was nice talking to you. The feeling is almost mutual.
Ah! Mrs. Sheldon? Yes? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Emily Crandall's. Get on with it, dear. I was wondering, would it be possible for me to see the trivet you borrowed from Josiah Crowley? You may not only see it, you may have it. Once I find it, that is. Unfortunately, I've an errand to run, so I can't look for it right now. Maybe I could run the errand for you. I have a car. So I see. A rather expensive car at that. Very well, Miss Drew. Go fetch my bridge cards from Miss Drakowski, and upon your return, I shall present you with that trivet. Who's Miss Drakowski? The local telephone operator. You can find her at her house, or Titusville Telco, as she insists on calling it. The switchboard is in her parlor. As you can imagine, she never entertains. I, on the other hand, am expecting company within the hour, so do hurry. Hello again. The key that you had Mr. Waddell appraise, could that be the key to the clock that Josiah Crowley gave you? It might have been, I suppose. You know about that? Yes, in fact, I paid the appraisal fee. I have the key right here. How industrious of you. You see, when he told me the key was worthless, I lost all interest in it. So, it would be all right if I kept the key for myself? I have no use for it. In fact, if you want that old clock, you can have it, too. Was that your car I saw parked near the Lilac Inn this morning? I haven't been there in months. You saw someone else's car. It's a very popular make and color, you know. Whose ever car it was, it wasn't there after the fire. Probably just someone sneaking onto that miniature golf course that Josiah built back there. 
Or bootleggers. I hear they frequent that area, too. I guess I'll be going. Nice talking to you. Are you Miss Joukowsky? Yeah, and you are? Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Emily Crandall. You know, at the Lilac Inn. Oh, yeah, I put you through to your father, didn't I? You pick up those papers for him yet? Actually, I... Wait a minute. How did you know about that? See this headset I'm wearing? I plug it in and, oh, what do you know? I hear things. Look, I'm kind of pressed for time. Going to a party and it takes me a while to get dolled up. What do you need? Mrs. Sheldon asked me to pick up her bridge cards from you. Tell you what, I'll get you those cards if you drive that fancy car of yours over to the orphanage and pick up some raffle tickets from Mrs. O'Shea. I should be able to unload a ton of them tonight. I'd be happy to. Good, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I've only got half a tank of gas left. I should gas up before I forget. Excuse me, are you Mrs. O'Shea? Yes. My name is Nancy Drew and... Stephen, put that down this instant. We do not run with sticks in our hands. Or in our mouths. I'm sorry. 
You were saying, Miss Joukowsky asked me to pick up some raffle tickets from you? Oh, yes, the raffle tickets. The fact of the matter is I... Elsie, no hitting. I can't even think about those raffle tickets right now. I promised the children they'd each get a toy for going a full week without breaking anything. And I'm short five toys. Do not eat that, Clarence. Would you like me to get five toys for you? Oh, goodness, if you could do that, I'd be forever grateful. They can be any kind of toy at all. The children aren't the least pick. Of course it tastes bad, Clarence. It's a pine cone. I'd better go rinse out his mouth before. Oh, would you look at that? He's actually chewing it. You're not a squirrel, Clarence. Spit that out. Welcome to Zippy's, where Zipless service is Zippily's app and Zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 50 cents worth, please. That'll be 50 cents. Here you go. Drive Zippily. I'm supposed to deliver this telegram to Dr. Bob. That would be me. Thank you. Wow, that's a big telescope. Come back after dark and I'll let you take a look. You can consider it your tip. I may just do that. Bye-bye. I could buy some toys for the orphans in here. A vending machine that just sells toys. Keen. <laughs> Two toys down, three to go. toys. Four toys. I just need one more. Five toys. That's all I need.
Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Miss Temple at Lowood Academy. Keep up the good work. Hello, I've got a telegram for Miss Temple. I am she. We teachers don't get paid much, she you know. I understand. Uh, did this by any chance used to be the Brewster Academy? Why, yes, it did. Thought so. Bye. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Dr. Ackerman out at the Deer Mountain Resort. Keep up the good work. Do you have five toys for me? I certainly do. Oh, that's wonderful. You're such a saint, you hear me? A saint. I'd better get these inside before the children see them. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. O'Shea, the raffle tickets? Oh, the raffle tickets? I don't have them, dear. You'll have to pick them up from Belt's printer. Then just take them straight to Mr. Kowski. We don't pull hair, Ralphie. Especially when we have jelly on our hands. <sighs> Belt's print shop, wonderful. About the clothes. I'm just here to pick up the raffle tickets you printed for Mrs. O'Shea. No, oh, darn it. I did tell her I'd have those done today, didn't I? Well, I'm sorry, but they're just gonna have to wait until tomorrow. Oh, but I need to have them today. And I need to go fishing. Fishing? My brother-in-law thinks he's hot stuff because he caught an 18-inch largemouth bass this morning. So well, I bet him I could catch a 19-incher by the end of the day. If I do, I get his stamp collection. And if I don't, he gets mine. And since stamp collecting is about the only hobby I can afford these days, I'm going fishing. I know. You stay here and print those raffle tickets, and I'll go fishing for you. Not everybody can catch a 19-inch largemouth bass, you know. It takes skill and muscle and brains. That's a pretty smart. I can do it, Mr. Phelps. Better be right, because you're not getting those raffle tickets until I get my 19 inch Use my gear, I left everything out at the fishing hole. Great, I'll see you later. thing I need to do is bait my hook. Yuck. Now I toss this in the water, and when the bobber goes under the water, I need to pull the line up fast. Maybe there's money inside it. 
Oh boy, I'm beginning to really like fishing. Doesn't look like a large mouth bass. Doesn't look like a large mouth bass. like 19 inches to me. I should get this fish to Mr. Phelps before the smell gets even worse. Let's see what you got in there. How about that? You did it. Here, let me take it from you. Please do. I think it's starting to get a little ripe. Just rest yourself a minute while I get those raffle tickets. There you go. Ten dozen tickets to the annual Orphan's Benefit. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go make a telephone call. To your brother-in-law? Yeah, the one who used to collect stamps. <laughs> Bye. Everyone's inside. It must be nap time. Welcome to Zippy's, where zipless service is zippily zapped and zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 25 cents worth, please. That'll be 25 cents. Here you go. Drive zippily. You got those raffle tickets for me? I sure do. Great. And here are Mrs. Sheldon's bridge cards. One of the gals spilled Moxie all over them, but I cleaned them up real good, so let's not tell Mrs. Sheldon, okay? Okay. Thanks for your help, Miss Joukowsky. Thanks for your help. Bye now. bridge cards right here good and here is Josiah's trivet I didn't realize when I asked to borrow it that it was such an eyesore but once a sumptuous dish of my buff stroganoff was placed atop it I assure you no one noticed now do run along my guests will be arriving any minute and that dress of yours it's uh, well I like this dress it's very flouncy
can't get it out. I need to adjust the mirror so that the light hits them just right. 